What's going on guys? I'm Tyler and I just finished my first day at the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival. And at the Princess of Wales Theatre, I got to see the personal history of David Copperfield. Now, for those who don't know, this is not about the real-life magician. This is based off of an early Charles Dickens novel about a boy who slowly rises and falls through high society in 18th century London, and like most Charles Dickens books, it's about someone who rises up through hard work and honesty, whereas the crooked individuals usually get the shaft near the end of the book. And we've seen a lot of adaptations like these. Movies, miniseries, you name it. There's not really a ton that distinguish them, but what sets this apart from the others is that it's told in a much more lighthearted, comedic, and incredibly fast-paced way. And... If I'm being completely honest, there are just as many positives as there are negatives, but we'll focus on the positives. The biggest one, as you can expect, the performances are all really good, and just, they're much more genuine and heartwarming than you would expect from a period piece like this. Dev Patel, especially as Copperfield, has the youthful innocence that you would expect from a Charles Dickens hero, but he has a few characteristics that set him apart from others like Oliver Twist, whereas he can get angry, he can lash out at people, and he has a good way of using his own bad situations as a way to make light of himself and use it as a way to bond with people of higher class and get them to accept him for who he is. And that was something that I wasn't entirely expecting. There are some moments where he tells flashbacks of his childhood where it uses that perspective of him and another character watching the fantasy play out, and I'm just a sucker for a style like that. It's I just wish more directors would do stuff like that in their movies. And the cast of side characters are all really good with what they're given. Tilda Swinton, Benedict Wong, Peter Capaldi, and my absolute favorite, Hugh Laurie, as this sort of father figure to Copperfield who is a lot better dumber than most higher class people, but he's much more genuine and compassionate, and the two of them work together to help each other out in their most dire circumstances, and it's a very well-earned relationship. I wanted to see a lot more of what I got, but I am satisfied with the scenes that were given in the movie. Now, about the interracial casting, because a lot of people are going to point this out when it gets a wider release, and... As a dumb white Canadian, I will say this. I've got no problem seeing stuff like this in movies. I mean, it is fiction. We are aware that these are actors portraying real-life figures. I'm not... I just don't want every movie to be like the Disney remake formula where only good characters are white, black, and Asian, everything like that. But the bats, But evil people are always predominantly white. And as... Much as it would be easier to claim, it doesn't work that way in real life. And thankfully, the director realizes that because there are black people and Asian people in this movie who are villains, who use their lifestyle as a way to take advantage over others. Just as much as there are many, just as many black, white, and Asian people who are good. This is... <sighs> I'm not gonna say it. Fuck, I'm gonna say it. It is a lot more fair and balanced. I can't believe I had to say that, but it is true. It's one of the more honest portrayals of interracial casting. I hope more movies do, do this in the future, and this is proof that we can get a Hamilton movie. Now, the biggest problem with it being a lighthearted, fast-paced comedy is that the pacing, especially during the first 20 minutes, is all over the place. You were given so many facts about Copperfield's childhood and the traumatic events that he went through with so little time that a lot of the side characters who I was looking forward to seeing based on the actors and the character tropes that you would expect from a Charles Dickens story do not get as much time as they're deserved. Peter Capaldi stands out as a big one because he's given a lot of negative qualities, but he's also given a lot of sympathetic reasons for him doing bad things like begging and stealing because... He has people that depend on him, and he is, thankfully, a much bigger man that he's not going to run away from troubles like that. I wanted to see more of that struggle, but you don't really get it all that often. 
And as much as I'm not a big fan of stuffy villains, like, especially in period pieces, Gwendolyn Christie from Game of Thrones shows up as this very frosty bitch who, like, always has a permanent smile when someone's in pain. And honestly, it was funny. I wanted to see stuff like that. But she's in it for not even five minutes, and they kind of sort of build her up to be a menace, at least compared to the other people that she's connected with. There's also an event in the third act where two characters, without giving anything away, um, run away from David, that it took up a lot of screen time that I felt could have went to, like I said, his childhood, him developing from a young boy to a hardworking young man, and seeing the other people who he depends on, and they depend on him and their struggles, but instead we get this needlessly drawn out and melodramatic uh, side plot that really doesn't go anywhere. I'm not kidding when I say this, my favorite Charles Dickens adaptation of anything is Mickey's Christmas Carol, and it's not even a half hour long, but it still takes its time to build up the tension of the story to give us a dark and moody but still optimistic atmosphere, and to give us hope that even people who are at the bottom of the barrel can become upstanding citizens. This movie has a hard time picking which moments to speed through and which scenes to slow down and let the moments sink in for us to care. I am glad I saw the personal history of David Copperfield. It was well acted. The moments when I noticed, it was well directed. And as usual for a period piece, the costume and set design is really well done. It's just not a movie that I'm going to watch over and over again. I can't really even imagine myself seeing it a second time just because the pacing really is all over the place and it messes up some of the other and much more genuine aspects of the movie. And for that reason, I'm going to give The Personal History of David Copperfield a 3 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. Look forward to more TIFF reviews throughout the next week. And um, if you ever end up seeing The Personal History of David Copperfield, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, check out my other reviews at noperfectmovie.com. And once again, thank you all very much for watching. Take care.